Hello everyone! Today, I'm gonna show you how to use your Sony CyberShot DSC WA-30. I already made this video about 9 months ago, but I decided to record it again so that I can make a higher quality version. Now let's start. First, I'm gonna show you how to set up and charge your camera. So in the box, you should find your charging cable, your battery, and your camera. Now my camera came with a free SD card, but if you don't get one, then don't worry, since you can still buy it separately. And I would recommend buying an SD card with a large capacity so you can shoot a lot of photos and videos. Now to insert the battery, hold your camera upside down and take a look at the battery door. There's a lock and open. So we're gonna drag the slider to the open position, just like this, and then get the battery. Now there's an arrow on the battery and that indicates the correct direction to insert it. So we want to insert it in this direction, just like this, okay, and then push it into place. So the battery is secure, not falling off, and that means it's inserted correctly. Then get your SD card and you can insert it below the battery. Now the SD card doesn't have the indicator on which way to insert it, so you may just have to guess, and if it doesn't work, you can just flip it over and now it fits. There we go. Then close the battery door and drag the slider to the lock position. So pretty simple. To assemble the charger, get this piece over here. This is the power converter. And then you just need to get all these wires and connect them. So pretty self-explanatory and you can easily figure out where they go. So this one plugs in like this, right here. And then this USB one plugs in over here. Now, since this is a USB plug on this end of the charger, you don't actually need to use this power converter. You can actually use any power adapter or you can plug it into the USB port of your computer, laptop, or power bank. So there are a lot of different ways to charge a camera. But for now, we're gonna use the built-in charger or the charger that it came with. So that's this one. And then, I can plug in my camera and plug the other end into my power outlet. Okay, so I'm over here under my table where my power outlet is. And I'm just gonna plug it in over here, just like this. Looks like it doesn't wanna go in, bit of a fail. There we go, and then turn it on. Now if I look at my camera, it will light up over here if it's charging. So if your camera is charging, you will see a yellow or orange light on the power button. But if it's fully charged, you won't see any light. So this camera is fully charged at the moment and that's why it doesn't have the charging light. If you turn on or set up your camera for the first time, it may ask you to set the correct date and time. Now if you get this message on your camera, then have a tutorial on how to do that. And I'll leave the link in the description so you can check it out. So. I'm gonna show you how to take photos and videos on your camera. Now, the on and off button is over here at the top. And then, if you wanna turn on your camera, make sure that nothing is obstructing the lens. So you wanna be really careful that your hands aren't covering the lens, or if you have any objects that may obstruct the lens. So, to turn on your camera, just press the on button, and the lens will extend. That's why you wanna make sure you don't cover it. And the same goes for turning it off. If you wanna turn it off, make sure that nothing gets stuck in between the lens, since that may cause damage. There we go. And I also wanted to share this. This is my other Sony camera. And as you can see, the lens actually got stuck. So it no longer closes properly. And that's why you wanna take really good care of your lens to make sure that something like this won't happen to your camera. Okay, so when your camera is turned on, you'll get this nice opening screen and pretty cool sound. This is the default photo view that you'll see. Now on the right over here, we have some of the basic controls. This is the mode slider, and there are three modes on this camera. So over here, we have this camera icon, and that stands for the photo mode. And then we have this stretched landscape icon, this stretched rectangle, and that's the panorama mode, and then we have this film icon at the bottom, and that's the video or movie mode. So to switch between the modes, 
you can easily drag this over here. So right now we're in photo. If I wanna go to video, for example, I can drag it all the way down. So we're in our video or movie mode. And if I want to go to my panorama mode, I'll drag it to the center. Oops, a bit hard. And there, panorama. So it will tell you on the screen the current mode. I'm gonna show you how to use the photo mode. So I have the photo mode selected over here in the mode selector. And this is the default screen that you will see. Now the icons on the screen may look different since I have it set up with a grid line. And I also have the display settings set up to show more information. Now first I'm gonna show you how to select the recording mode. So tap on the menu button over here. And then you should see recording mode. Now this gives you a few options. We have intelligent auto, this eye with a camera icon. So this is the symbol. Now this is the automatic mode and I'd recommend using this if you're a beginner or you're already new to photography. Then this letter P is the program auto. Now you can switch between these by clicking left or right on this circle wheel. So I'm gonna click right. Now you have program auto. This is the description. Next we have picture effect. So this is a picture effect and then scene selection. Now if you wanna see more options for one of these, you can also use this center button to click into it. So I'm gonna click this and I will open it and show me the different scene selections. So look at this, we have soft skin, portrait, landscape, night portrait, night scene, high sensitivity, fireworks, snow, beach, pet, and food or gourmet. Now, these are really useful and you can easily adapt this to your shooting environment. So let's say you wanna shoot fireworks, then you can quickly go and select the fireworks scene selection by pressing the center button over here. And just like that, we have it configured to shoot fireworks. Now I'm gonna go back to my intelligent auto or my automatic mode. And most of the time, if you don't know which mode to use, I'd highly recommend just leaving it on auto. So there we go. Now even if I'm shooting my YouTube videos, I leave all my cameras on auto since it's the best for most scenarios and you don't have to worry about anything since the camera will adjust all the settings for you and try to get the best focus and exposure for that specific environment. So today it's pretty cloudy and here's what it looks like. If I move my hand over here, it will automatically focus just like that. Now let's get a subject. So we have this cactus over here. And to take a picture, you can use the shutter button over here. Now this shutter button over here has two functions. You can lightly rest your finger on it to focus. So there we go, that's the focus. And then you can force click or press it down to take a picture. So think of it as a laptop trackpad where you can do a light click and a hard click. So you do a light click to focus and then a harder click to take the shot. And now here's my shot, it gives me a preview. So let's take another shot, just demonstrate, focus and take the shot. Now since I already took two shots and the camera can focus well, I already know that the focus will work properly. So if I don't wanna focus, and I just wanna shoot really quickly, I can do that by just hard pressing on the shutter button. So here's how to take a fast picture, just like that. I can do it again, just like that. Wow, that's really quick. So if I go to a nearer location, then I wanna focus it again. So I'm gonna rest my finger again, and then hard press again. There we go, that's the shot. Sorry about the cut in the video. My iPhone just ran out of storage and also became really dark outside. So I decided to record this segment again. Now let's continue. I'm gonna show you how to zoom in and out while taking photos. Now over here, this cactus is visible in the frame and I can easily take a photo. But now what if the cactus is really far? then I might wanna to decide to zoom in on the subject. So if you wanna zoom in, 
use a zoom rocker over here. It says W and T. If you don't know what this means, W stands for wide and T stands for telephoto. So think of W as your minus or zoom out and T as your plus or zoom in. So if you wanna zoom in, I'm gonna click the T, okay? Just like this, very simple. Take the shot. And then if I wanna zoom out, I can go back to my W. There we go. And that's basically it. So all you need to do is zoom in, zoom out, set the focus and shoot, very simple. Now the next feature I'm gonna show you how to use, it's called tracking focus. So if we turn our attention to the bottom left of the screen, it says tracking focus, and we have this blue icon. Now this icon is referring to the center button over here. So if you click on the center button, it will enable tracking focus. But first, what is tracking focus? Well, unlike autofocus, where autofocus will just select the nearest object and then focus on it, tracking focus allows you to choose your subject and specifically set the focus on that subject. So for example, if my cactus is over here and I wanna set focus on the cactus, even if it's not in the center of the frame, I can use tracking focus to do that. So to turn on tracking focus, press the center button and then you will have this little square and that's your aim. So you wanna aim it at the subject that you want to set the focus on. So I'm gonna aim it at this cactus over here, just like this, see? And then press the center button again to lock it. Now, watch what happens if I move my camera. Focus is locked on the cactus. So even if the cactus is over here at the edge of my frame on the left side, it's still in focus if I take the shot. So I'm gonna take the shot over here. And as you can see, it's still in focus because I set and locked the focus. So watch what happens if I move it away. It still tracks it. Take a look at this. And you can also set this on a person. Maybe the person is walking around. So the focus will automatically follow that person. What happens if I block it just for fun? Let's see. And return. So it automatically disables. Yep, it disabled. So let's make sure you don't block it and it will work properly. I'm gonna do it one more time to show you. I'm gonna press it to select and then it tracks the cactus and I can take the picture where the cactus is in focus. So this is good for more complex shots. If you wanna select the subject manually and you don't wanna rely on the autofocus. Next, I'm gonna show you how to take a panorama. So I'm over here in my panorama mode and it says press shutter and move camera smoothly in direction of arrow. So it's pointing to the right and it means I should move my camera to the right. But what if you wanna move your camera to the left? Well, no problem, you can easily just press the left button over here and then it will switch to the left. So I'm gonna go back to the right, left, right, left. Very simple. I'm gonna go back to the right and then you have to press the shutter like this and then move your camera to the direction that you specified. So, whoops, fail. So I'm gonna move it to the right, just like this. It says processing. And now I have a panorama of my desk. So that's what's on my desk right now. I have my box over there, the cactus, and my iPad over there. But this is really useful for landscape, or if you wanna take a photo of something that's really wide. So let's say you go on a vacation and you find this really nice beach, but you can't capture the whole beach in one shot. So instead you can use the panorama. Now onto video mode. So video is one of the simplest modes, just select it and then press this button over here, the shutter button to start and press it again to stop. Now you can also zoom in and zoom out while recording, just like this. Zooming in zooming out. 
So now I'm recording a video and this will also record the audio. Very good for making YouTube videos. And this was actually the first camera that I used to make my YouTube videos on, which is pretty impressive. Let's turn it off, just like that. And the recording stops. Next, I'm gonna show you how to view your photos and videos and how to transfer them to your computer or phone. So first, if your camera is turned off, tap and hold the playback button. It looks like this. And that will let you view your photos and videos. Now, if the camera is already on, just like this while you're taking pictures, you can simply press the button to view them. But I'd highly recommend turning off your camera since that will close the lens, then holding down the playback button so you can easily view your photos and videos with the lens closed. And that way you won't worry about trouble holding it or damaging the lens. So I can hold it comfortably like this in any way I want, or I can set it down on a flat surface like this. Very convenient. Now to view them, you can just tap left or right like this. If it's a video, you can press the center button to play just like this. Hopefully you're able to hear the audio. And if you want to zoom in and zoom out, you can use the same zoom rocker. So let's zoom out. And if I zoom out, it zooms out just like that. I can also scroll up and down, left and right, to select a specific photo. Let's say I want to view this one. Okay. And there's even a slideshow function. If I press menu, scroll down, and slideshow. So here's our slideshow. We can also exit just like this and do a slideshow with music. So you slideshow with music. There's some music. I can also adjust the volume over here. Okay, pretty good. To delete an image, use the delete button over here in the bottom right and then you can delete this image multiple images or all images on this day so we can delete this one for example and then this one and then this one now i don't want to delete too many since i'm still going to show you how to transfer them onto your computer so to connect your camera to your computer you will need the usb cable that came with it so this is what I was showing you earlier. It's part of the charging cable. And I plug the other end into my camera. Also, most new computers, especially Apple and Windows laptops, now come with USB Type-C ports. So you'll need a little adapter just like this if you want to be able to plug it in to your USB-C port. So this is USB-A port. We plug the USB-A into the USB-A port. And we plug the USB-C into the USB-C port. So this is my computer. It's an iPad Pro M1, and so it has the USB-C port. Now open your Files app. If you're in Windows, it's called the File Explorer. And then hold down the playback button on your camera. It should say USB mode or something along those lines. So USB mode. And then we're gonna wait. So it's over here, it says no name. No name one, and I guess it's a camera. So let's go and select it. Okay. And then DCIM is where you'll find all your photos, and MP root is where you'll find all your videos. I'm gonna go over here and click on the DCIM, and then click on one of these folders. Now I have all my pictures. So we can see the date and the time. So over here says today. These are the pictures I took today. I can also select ones to delete or move them to my iPad or copy and paste them. So if you want to post them onto Instagram, for example, you can also do that. And if you want to transfer pictures and videos to your Android phone, I also have a tutorial on that and I'll leave the link in the description. So let's click on one of these photos. There we go. That's the picture I got of the cactus. I can zoom in like this. Okay. And now it will vary depending on your device, but this is the 
Apple iPadOS 15 Files app. So if you're in Windows, you can read the instructions on how to use your specific files app. There we go, some of the other pictures. And that's how you can easily view them on your device. So keep in mind, you can also copy, paste, and save or share to social media, just like this. I have some options so I can share, for example. And there we go. I can even message it or mail it. That's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching it and it helped you learn more about your Sony WA30. I have more tutorials about this camera and other camera videos in my camera's playlist. You can also check out the description for some useful links and feel free to leave a question, comment, or suggestion down below. Please like and subscribe for more. It helps support my channel. So, thanks for watching.